When you look at the flat out character study, then when you look at the humor, I don't know if there's any corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that this character can't merge into. Hi, Grant. Uh, so great to meet you. So excited to talk to you. I love this show. If you couldn't tell by my obnoxiously nerdy backdrop, I am a lifelong Marvel fan. <laughs> so, hey, man, so excited. I love, I love what's over your left shoulder. You've got good taste. Right Best there, friends. right there. I want to I want to ask about that. Uh, but before we get to that, my favorite Moon Knight comic book run, I would love to know. I, I tried to ask this question to Muhammad. He had a great answer. His answer was sort of like the show ended up standing on its own. So we kind of pulled back from this. But I wanted to ask you, one of the executive producers, did you guys have a specific place in the MCU timeline that Moon Knight took place in? And then how did that evolve to where it's kind of like maybe it's a little bit more ambiguous and some of those references and, and different things are sort of taken away, I guess. Well, I mean, one of the things from the comic that you know very well, the beauty and the master craftsmanship that's in the comic is multiple levels of storytelling. But one of the things that rises to the forefront is that comic always keeps you guessing. Yeah. So that was one of the aspects that we also brought to the table as we transferred it from the comic book page to the Disney Plus um, offering. And we always wanted to keep the audience guessing where we were and where we were at and where we were going. So um, no spoilers. I don't know if we absolutely actually ever answer that question. Right, right. Purposefully so. Um, we're going to keep the audience's guessing until the final frame on this one. I love it. So, uh, so yeah, from what I've seen of the show so far, I'm so, so all about it. I can't wait to watch the rest of it, the last two episodes. But let's talk about that. My favorite Moon Knight comic book, probably of all time, is that Jeff Lemire, Greg Smallwood run. Amazing. Was there anything for you that was, it was really exciting that inspired this series specifically from that book? You know, I, I will say this. As you know, too, Moon Knight got his start in 1975 in Werewolf by Night. And then he bounced around in various Marvel IPs for about five years until he got launched in his own comic book series in 1980. And I think from 1980 on, it wasn't necessarily, hey, we're gonna put our finger on this issue or this run or this right. one down here. Right. It was really, what are the tonal aspects of Moon Knight that people really gravitate towards and love? And as you know, that is the globetrotting aspect that is his origin story. That is the Egyptology aspects, the Egyptology-centric narrative that is part of his origin story as well. That is also the spookier elements of Moon Knight, the supernatural elements of Moon Knight. Things go bump in the night on the Moon Knight page, and they go bump in the night in our series. Yep. Also, the humor aspects of Moon Knight. Moon Knight has some really good comedic epi uh, episodes in there. Yeah. And so we really, rather than saying, this is it, or this is it, or this is it, we looked at that collective and said, tonally, what makes this character unique? Mm -hmm. And once we got all those different tonal aspects, I think through you know being led by Jeremy Slater, our incredible head writer, um, we created a narrative tapestry that I think is truly unique to the MCU, but it's very reverential to the comics at the same time. If you like Moon Knight, on the page, you're gonna like Moon Knight on the screen. Yeah. But if you don't know anything about Moon Knight and you just like great storytelling, I think you're gonna to wanna to tune in to Moon Knight. Just so for anybody who's watching who hasn't had a chance to watch the show yet, if you love that Jeff Lemire, Greg Smallwood run, end of episode four, baby. Ooh, man, that oh, was yeah. some good stuff. Good, good stuff. Uh, yes. I, I, talking about that bigger picture and, and what you guys were deciding to be inspired by from the comics, why does this story start with Stephen Grant versus Mark Spector? Well, you know, I, I think, again, um, you know, I, I can't speak, you know, enough about Jeremy Slater, our head writer. One thing Jeremy Slater said from day one, no matter who we start with, Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, Moon Knight, Conchu, whoever it is, I want the audience to be in the front row from frame one, yeah. because that's going to make them invested in this series because they're going to have skin in the game. Because as, as the narrative unpeels before Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, it's going to unpeel before everyone's eyes in the collective together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that that narrative teed up easier for or better, not easier is not the right word, but just created a better storyline for was easing into it through the eyes of Stephen Grant. And so hats off to Jeremy Slater in our incredible writer's room. Um, I can't take credit for it. That's Jeremy <laughs> Slater. And uh, I think it made a very rich opening. Absolutely. Yeah. And also hats off to Oscar for making the Stephen Grant personality so fun and so unique. I mean, yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. that was awesome. Awesome to watch. I'll, I'll tell you this, and because I know you know the comic. Before this show, I was team Mark Spector through yeah. and through. Yeah. I'm Mark Spector. Give me Mark Spector, Mark Spector, Mark Spector. 
And now through mostly through the amazing um, artistry of Oscar Isaac, I don't know whose team I'm on. Yeah. And that is, you know, believe me, that does go back to Jeremy. That goes to Kevin, Lou, Victoria, Brad, Muhammad Diab, Benson and Moorhead. But really, really Oscar Isaac presenting both sides of the coin to the point where I don't know who to root for anymore. And that's what Oscar wanted to do from day one. I don't want to tell the audience who to root for. I want them to decide. And that's yeah. what he brought to the table. And it shows, yeah. my friend. It's a great conflict as a viewer to watch it because I'm like, oh, uh, you know, who who, yeah. who am I rooting for? But that's great. Absolutely. So I asked this to Muhammad and he was brutally honest and he was like hector they have told me nothing they are so secretive this is you know this is how marvel studios does it i asked <laughs> if if he had been involved at all or had, had heard about any of those potential future plans we know that everything is always in flux question to you grant are you aware of any of the potential future plans for the character of mark specter moon knight again mohammed said there may be only one person on the planet who knows who is kevin so who's if, that who's that yeah it, it would be kevin feige right um, yes. but but if you haven't heard about any of those plans or if you guys you know whatever it is i would love to just pick your brain as a fan of moon knight where do you think that he would fit best in the mcu are there any other characters that you would love for Moon Knight to get to interact with. Well, here's the beauty of Moon Knight, I think. And yes, I'm gonna to have to echo part of Muhammad's answer. We all know Kevin Feige is the master. Um, and I'm sure Kevin has places he wants MCU to, or Moon Knight to appear in the future. But it kind of goes back to those tonal aspects that we gravitated towards that were so popular on the comic book page mm -hmm. that we infused into the series. When you do look at the action adventure aspect of Moon Knight, when you do look at the scary or spooky or bump in the night aspects, when you look at the flat out character study, then when you look at the humor, I don't know if there's any corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that this character can't merge into. Right. So I don't know, you may see him in space, you may see him with Doctor Strange, I don't know, but I will tell you this, it's because of the craftsmanship that was infused to this storyline from Jeremy Slater to the very end when we were shooting, um, I think the options are limitless. I really yeah. do. This guy can yeah. go anywhere. Well, I'm going to give you one of two options. Please. Unless you say, unless you say, uh, plead the fifth. I, I know that, again, coming from the comics, Moon Knight has been a member of the Avengers West Coast. Moon Knight has also been a member of the but Marvel didn't he ripped Knights. But he ripped up his card. He, he did. Up his card. He did. He did. He, he tape did. it back together. But yes. That's so right. Sorry it, to cut you off. Yes. No, 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 not at all. And, and you know, with Disney Plus being such an exciting home for all things Marvel, they just got all of those Defenders characters. And Moon Knight has been an ally to some of those characters, enemy to some of those characters, Frank yeah. Castle, Punisher. Between an Avengers sort of path or more like a street level Marvel Knights sort of path, where do you think you would like to see him go, Grant? I don't know. And 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 again, I don't mean to be wishy-washy, but this character keeps you guessing. Yeah. And that's why I told you, I don't know <laughs> if I'm team Mark Spector or team Stephen Grant anymore. Right, right. I don't know if I want him to be the street level guy, or I don't know if I want to see him with Guardians of the Galaxy. And I do think that is the beauty of this series. And that's why it is new and different with what the fans are going to start seeing on March 30th. I can't put a finger on this character. And I've been working on this show for over three years now. Yeah, yeah. And I still don't know. And I think that's a compliment. I don't think it's wishy-washiness. I think it's a compliment to what came out of Kevin's brain initially and the, what we were able to bring to the screen. Um, yeah. So, yeah, again, not to be wishy-washy. No, 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 no. It's, to, it's, and, you know, it's also a compliment to the rest of our cast, you know, May and Ethan. Um, and the, the complexities that Ethan brings to this character. Yeah. Just like I didn't know if I was supposed to root for Mark Spector or Stephen Grant. Sometimes when I hear Arthur Harrow talking, I sit there and goes, wait, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And this is the guy that we're supposed to hate, but we can't. I find myself rooting for Ethan sometimes. And it's I mean, just, it's 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 like you said earlier that the, wherever the show starts, that's who you were going to be with the characters. Technically, we start the show with Arthur Harrow in a yeah. really gnarly moment. And it, it does make me kind of sympathize and figure what's what the heck's going on with this character. So just to go back to what you said, Grant, it's also a testament to the character on the page because he has so many endless, limitless possibilities yeah. that I totally am picking up what you're putting down. It's not you being wishy-washy. It's just that like you could put him anywhere and it would be awesome. I want to thank you for talking to me this afternoon, man. This was so, so great. Congrats on the show. I can't wait for everybody to see it. And I can't wait to watch the end of it. Have a fantastic rest of your afternoon, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time.